Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, it's been a while since I've done a video with the recent house move that's been going on, hence the incredible mess everywhere around me. That's why you can just see one very boring wall. But I thought it was time to do some kind of video. A few weeks ago I posted a video about how I was going to be moving over to Linux full-time from Windows, and that is coming up shortly, the first video of that should be next week. But one of the things that's been happening since then is I've been doing a lot of reading to catch up on what's been going on with Linux since I last used it on a regular basis. One of the things that's really interests me is what's been happening with desktop graphics, partly because I want to contribute to it in some kind of way, and partly just to see what's been happening since I was using it many, many years ago on a day-to-day -day basis. All of that has led me to finding out more about Wayland and looking at the differences between Wayland and X. Having read quite a lot on it, it seems there's quite a lot of confusion about what Wayland is, why X is good or bad, and why one thing is better than the other. In fact, a lot of people have probably never even heard of Wayland for using Linux. So I thought I'd use this video as a quick, why X sucks, why Wayland sucks less, and why I think it's probably the way forward. So let's have a very brief history lesson. It's 1987, Windows 1.0 is out, Reagan is president, the first ever Final Fantasy game has just come out on the original NES, and that's when X11 came out. Yup, the X Windows System Protocol version 11 was released in 1987, when I was three years old, and when Windows 1 was out. We're now many, 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 many years later, and X11 is still there without a fundamental rewrite. In that time, Windows has come on quite a long way. So has Mac OS. In fact, when Mac OS X came out, Apple considered whether or not they could use X Windows, but for numerous reasons decided it would be utterly pointless as they'd break capacity with everything else, so they might as well write their own window manager. The first time I encountered X was back in 1997. I had X386 at the time before XORP was a thing, and it was a pain to get working. In fact, getting it working with multiple monitor support was such a revelation that I backed my config file up about 100 places for fear I may one day have to go through that pain all over again. And then the Enlightenment Window Manager came out. Wow. I'd only been using Window Maker and a horrible, horrible original versions of KDE up until that point. Enlightenment changed everything as far as I was concerned for Linux desktop graphics. It was pretty, there were transparencies, it looked beautiful. And so I thought, oh, we're not far off all of these little niggles being fixed. Well, that was 20 years ago. What has the Linux community established over the last 20 years? Well, X86 as the main server became Xorg. The code base got tidied up. Several hundred thousand lines of source code got deleted with a bunch of extensions nobody uses anymore. Some extensions got created and then deleted. We've bodged in various 3D renderings or into X. And that's kind of it. It's still filled with issues. You want different monitors with different DPIs? Nope. You want to have an application without tearing? Mm, nope. You want to resize a window with it looking smooth? Nope, that's not going to happen. You want to add a new feature for some kind of new input device to X itself? Good luck with that one. The developers of X themselves think that's absolutely difficult and they've got pretty much as far as they can with it. What about pop-up windows? They're sensible enough, right? Yeah, apart from they break your screensaver. The amount of issues with X are huge, and many people will see them. But what actually is X? Well, X is fundamentally, originally, a communications protocol where you can request drawing things. So you could go to an X server as a client application, draw me a square, we'll call that my window. Now put me some circles, some circles, and some text there. Ta-da! Basic drawing. And original user interface toolkits were built on top of this. But fundamentally, it just used primitives drawing shapes that every application had. Now you obviously know that Qt, EF, and GTK all have very distinct user interface styles. They're not using these primitives. What happens now is toolkits render all the graphics themselves, put them all together, and then shove them across to the X server. The window manager then picks them up, takes all of those graphics, puts them together in a pretty way, dealing with things like expose and layering and transparencies, and then shoves them back to the X server, which puts them back to the graphics card. So where X was originally genius was it was an incredibly lightweight network protocol where you could get one window rendering for very little network traffic, and you could create farms of terminal servers. Awesome genius idea for the late 80s. In fact, until not that long ago, you know, 10, 
years ago, it was still way better than Windows could do for that. But the reality is that's not what it's used for today. Today, what it does is it takes a huge amount of data and it sucks it in and spits it out and then takes it back and then displays it on screen. It's not really meant to do that. In fact, it was meant to actually do the drawing, but it's become so bad that it's just used as a communications protocol. And everyone goes, oh, but it's so good, you can run applications across the network, but you can't if they're doing a lot of stuff like that. They just won't work properly. In the intervening years, Windows Vista came out. Don't shoot me. Windows Vista wasn't the best operating system in the world, but it added DWM, which was Compositing Window Manager. Compositive Window Manager, in essence, does nice 3D effects so that you can do the things like the glass transparency and layer windows on top of each other and put them on a spinny cube and do whatever you want. them. But fundamentally, it allows for windows to look a lot nicer and the whole experience is what we would consider a modern interface. Now, DWM under the hood became a very stable, very good window manager. Yes, everyone hated Vista, but the fundamental technology was awesome and it's what we're still using in the Windows world today. We've had a lot of improvements in Mac OS in terms of what goes on in Window Manager compared to where we were on Mac OS 9 20 years ago when I first started using X11. And yet, X is still not good. It has all those issues. The problem with X is it has to be backwards compatible with everything. So if you want to run a X application from 1987, it should work on XORG. That's mental in itself. Right? If you still got applications from 1987 you want to run. But the reality is you probably don't. You probably want to do some gaming, you probably want to do some web browsing, and you probably want it to look nice. Because let's be honest, that's what people care about. And X just isn't designed for that. It's being used as a comms protocol when it's supposed to be a rendering engine. So, what did the XORG developers say? It's rubbish. Let's spin it. So they started working on something called Wayland, and this is where people get confused. Wayland is not a server that displays things. Wayland is just a communications protocol. That's it. All Wayland defines is an extensible communications protocol with a few basic mandatory bits and a few different things that people can plug into it. At its fundamental level, it has a client, which is all the applications, and a compositor, which is in effect like a window manager. The compositor runs and is a Wayland server. All of the applications run, they are Wayland clients. The only thing they really have between them is the server sends keyboard mouse data and exposes what monitors are there, and the client sends raw video data back to be stuck together. The compositor then sticks all of that together and puts it on screen. Wayland itself doesn't provide anything but a definition of that protocol. Now, what many people have seen is something called Western, which is made by the Wayland developers, and that is a reference compositor. So that is an example of all the things you could do if you wanted to in the world of Wayland. So Wayland is a protocol, it's Western as a reference compositor, and it's a bunch of libraries to allow you to make your own compositors and applications easily. But fundamentally, that's it. It tries to be as simple as possible, just to allow other things to get down and do the job they want to do. Well, what's happened from that? I think it was, ooh, 2011, 12, somewhere around there that Wayland started. Since then, we've now got GNOME, Enlightenment, and KDE all have Wayland support. That is, in terms of the client frameworks for GTK, for EF, for Qt, and in terms of the window managers for Kwin, Genome, and Enlightenment. So, we're at the point that you can use Wayland. In fact, better than that, there is an X interface for Wayland. In effect, it's an X server that runs within Wayland. So you can run all your X applications within it. And actually, you can even run Wayland, well, you can run Western and some other window managers for Wayland within X. So you can run Wayland apps within X if you want to. This all sounds brilliant, doesn't it? And what are the benefits of it? Well, A, it's a lot more simple, it's a lot easier to maintain. B, it should allow you to have all modern, funky graphics stuff you want to do, because it cuts out all that rubbish in the middle of it and just allows you to focus on doing what you want to do, which is render things nicely rather than fighting ways to get it. That sounds awesome. So why is no one using it? Well, unfortunately, Wayland does have issues. Big issue is distributions haven't picked it up yet. Fedora now ships with it as default, but that's the only one. And that's because GNOME, E, and... KDE aren't yet at full parity when it comes to experience with Wayland versus X. 
a big problem that's there is the NVIDIA drivers, the proprietary ones, do not work in Wayland because NVIDIA went, we want to come up with this new wonderful way of putting 3D graphics on there rather than the way that you've already established and they don't want to code it. So that's an ongoing debate. The Nouveau drivers work if you've got a supported one, blah, 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 but fundamentally that is an issue that you're going to have. Unlike with X, where there are fairly good NVIDIA proprietary drivers that are available for it. And the other thing is there are some things you still can't do easily that you can do within X. So in terms of running it over a network in the same way you can X for having a distributed display or a terminal server thing, it doesn't work. In fact, Wayland is expressly designed that one application cannot spy on another one. Now, this is good when it comes to malware and user privacy. In fact, X is terrible for that. But... That means we can't easily have something in the world of Wayland that is, well, either A, a screen reader, or B, a VNC server that can capture everything and send it out. It's not impossible, it just means that the compositor has to support it, which means there isn't a one application fits all approach for it. So you would need the equivalent of a VNC server for every single compositor that was out there. And this is where Wayland starts to suck. Because it defines nothing, it means that Everything needs a custom implementation. You want to put window borders on your application. Well, that's nice. In X, what happens is the window manager starts, it finds all of the windows and it puts borders around them. So if you're running a Qt or you're running a GTK or an EF application, it will look native to whatever your window manager is. Well, in Wayland, mm, totally up to you. The client application can render it or the compositor can render it. Now, if you're running a client application that renders a window and a compositor that renders a window border, then you're going to get two sets of borders around some, but not all windows. You see, this is the problem. At the moment, Wayland is too generic, and there's definitely a resistance to put too much in there for fear that we'll go back to the beast that is X. I understand that, but I think there has to be some kind of common ground. Otherwise, we're going to end up with just a dozen completely different user interface systems that have got a fundamental, very basic protocol in common, but nothing will be able to interoperate with each other. And that is a real problem that needs to be sorted. And if you're going completely GNOME, completely EE, completely KD stack, great. If you're not, things are gonna get quirky. Some things won't have borders. Some things will have two borders. And until that gets sorted, I think there are gonna be problems with take up on Wayland. Many people cite many different reasons, but as a software developer and an architect, those are the biggest problems I see with uptake going into the future with it. All that being said, I'm actually going to be using Wayland as my main um, user interface. I have decided, maybe a bit mentally, not even to use GNOME, which is probably the most developed in terms of functionality. It's the one that ships Dora. It also has support, it's the only one that has support for the NVIDIA proprietary drivers. Instead, I'm going to run E, and I've had to buy myself an AMD GPU just to be able to support it and run something decent. But there's a reason I'm doing this. I've actually started work on my own graphical user interface toolkit, similar to Microsoft WPF, but for running on .NET Core and Linux targeting Wayland. Pretty cool. And I want to embrace the system as much as I can. I think it is the future. I think X is dead, and I think X sucks. But Wayland has issues that we need to sort as well. And I think the way we can sort that is by actually using it and approach those issues rather than nobody using it and it just being a theoretical thing. I hope this was useful. I'm sorry it was mainly a talking head one with quite a lot of content. But the next video I'm going to have up here is going to actually be how I get my Windows PC converted over to and running Gen 2 Linux with ZFS. First one is just going to be basically getting it up online, getting ZFS running and getting a basic console Linux with Gen 2 running. So that should be up next week. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this one. Leave your comments below and I'll see you next time. Thanks.